What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to WWE 13, The Attitude Era. Today, beginning with Mankind versus Stone Cold. Double Arm DDT, Mandible Claw, win by submission. And so I welcome you to a fine Tuesday here on the program. The Big Nasty Bastard, Paul White, a.k.a. The Big Show. And we're here to discuss wrestling as we do at 5 p.m. as usual. And before I get into Raw, we have kind of just one news story. And that is there was a Tokyo Sports article saying that at some point after Dominion, WWE made Naito an offer and he turned it down. Which, I'm not surprised that he would. I have to wonder just how much money they could throw around to get somebody like that to jump ship to WWE. Especially when he can look at Nakamura, Asuka, Almas, and be like, you know what, they might not use me to the best of my ability. And I'm a much bigger deal here over in New Japan, who he calls the best wrestling company in the world. Which, um, in, in terms of match quality, is kind of hard to argue with, to be honest. So, there is that. But, that's kind of the only real story. And honestly, I don't know... What King, his level are you of going English to English welcome is, so. the great one? Of course I'm going to welcome the great one. Rock, it's a pleasure to have you here. Of course, it's everyone's pleasure. The Rock doesn't need an introduction anywhere in this civilized world. The chosen one. The most electrifying man in entertainment is here. And he's bringing a lot of class to the show right now. The ratings are through the roof. Like, if you look at the English of, say, Nakamura and Asuka and Almas and be like, well... Is Naito good or better than that? I don't know. And that certainly, for someone like Vince, is a limiter to your ceiling, if nothing else. In any event, though, let's move on to Monday Night Raw last night uh, from Manchester, UK. Also the same thing tonight on SmackDown. So when you're watching this right now, there should already be those SmackDown spoilers are out there. And we should already know who the team captain is for Team SmackDown, etc., etc. I'm going to get Shane, but... We'll see. I mean, he is the best in the world, after all. Haha. Uh -huh. Anyway, Monday Night Raw. You couldn't even put a shirt on the big show. On the road to Survivor Series. And we did establish some things, and we also had some things just repeat themselves. Like, say, Balor and Lashley again. So, you know, it wasn't a totally fresh show like it needed to be. But there was obviously some stuff heading in toward Survivor Series. Your team captain for Team Raw is Baron Corbin, we have Ziggler, McIntyre, and Braun on that team, and other members to be determined, I suppose. So I guess we'll see how that ends up playing out over the next, only a couple weeks here. It's, we're, we're already pretty close to that show, so that's kind of a thing now, isn't it? And also, the captain, apparently not, not wrestling because she's still injured, of the women's team on Raw is Alexa Bliss. Uh, and so there is that bit of Beardness. Oh, drop kick. Basement drop kick. So, Ruby Riot out there getting that cheap deceased wrestler heat by snapping the sunglasses of Jim the Anvil Neidhart, which that is the most wrestling thing you could do. If there's a thing in wrestling and it has a value to a, to a wrestler, at some point it's probably going to get destroyed. Just on a on an offhanded weird example because they can make anything seem important in wrestling Dean Ambrose had a plant it was named Mitch Mitch got smashed like that's kind of the dumbest stuff if you give it value to a wrestler it's probably going to end up getting smashed at some point so that's kind of how it works that is why you win a trophy cuz someone's going to smash that trophy and i understand that some folks are going to be like that's too recent uh but Number one, usually when this kind of thing happens, you have everybody involved sign off. Number two, I doubt that was his only pair of sunglasses. And number three, it's wrestling. If you don't expect him to get cheap heat on somebody's death, think about what they did with Eddie. Like, seriously. They get cheap heat when people die. And I would imagine that most wrestlers understand that when they die, they're probably going to use cheap heat. And, you know, that's just kind of how... That and going. I thought that was that was the wrong button. Attack slug. I got to hold. All right. So with mankind, you have to hold the uh, the deal to get the double arm DDT. Anyway, outside of Ruby and her cheap heat with the glasses snap, which honestly is expected because 
I would imagine any wrestler is like, yo, when I die, make sure you do, make sure you do something with that heat. Right? So, there was that. Also, we have new Raw Tag Team Champions. Thank God we do. Big Show, what are you doing? Thank God we do. Because, certainly, those tag team belts were going to be a just harbinger over the head of Dean and Seth during that feud. So, thankfully, Dean didn't show up for the match. Seth loses to the authors of Pain. I'm sorry, the AOP as they are now known, because Vince, I guess, doesn't like full names for anybody, so make it an acronym. It's fine. Whatever. But yes, thankfully, we can get our Raw Tag Division back to where it should be. I feel like it's just been kind of out of sorts ever since the B Team won those belts. So, get it back to where it should be. At least have AOP have a, have a good feud with, say, the Revival, or, you know, another quality tag team, and get things back to where they need to be. Speaking of tag teams, though, actually, no, before that, before that, why are crowds chanting, you sold out at Dean Ambrose? Who did he sell out to? Like, when Seth turned on the shield, he sold out to the authority. That was a logical conclusion. Who did Dean sell out to? Like, that is a weird chance to chant for Dean. There's that double underhook. D, D, T, and now we need to submit a little rattlesnake. But no, back to the tag team thing. It seems like Nia and Tamina are teamed up. They're teamed up for for reasons. And we won't imagine those reasons will, uh, will, will eventually be the women's tag team titles, which have not been announced yet. But that seems like a thing that should be the case. Wait, what? I won the match by... Really? I tapped him out. Does it have to be the mandible claw? Like, that doesn't seem to be the... It said, win by submission. How is he not tapped out? What did I miss, Austin? You tapped, you dumb SOB. What did I miss? I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, old Steve-O here. So Naya and Tamina attacked Ember Moon, and I guess she'll find a tag team partner, and they'll do some more tag team stuff for those eventual belts being announced at some point. Anyway. Let's try to actually finish this match, because I thought I had it done. I thought I had it won, son, and I clearly did not. Clearly. There is some other bit of shenaniganizing here. That's not a word, but I just made it up. Shenaniganizing here. No. No, Steve. No. How about no? How about eh, eh, as they say. Okay. Another... Oh, the cactus driver! The cactus driver! Damn near broke my neck, but I still got up. Alright, Mr. Sucko! There it is. I don't even think it's a submission. Honestly. See? It's not even a submission. What is Big Show doing? How do I win this match when I've hit the breaking point? Come on, Big Show. Call the match, Big Show! I won that match twice. So, that was weird. He didn't see it? Well, wow. Alright. Oh, no! What in the Sam Hell? Steve Austin versus Paul White. Okay. Oh, good God. Luthez Press... With a chair five times, avoid getting hit by any finishers. Perform a finisher on Paul White and pin him in ten seconds. That sounds like a fresh nightmare, but here we are. So your main event on Raw was, man, they are continuing this uh, rocket strap to Drew McIntyre. They are making him look like a million bucks, so thank God they're actually trying to build more main event talent on Raw, especially with Roman Reigns being out for who knows how long battling cancer. So, thank God they're getting somebody with a rocket strap, and McIntyre certainly looks the part and is that main event level caliber talent they could definitely use on the show. And having him tap out Kurt Angle with his own ankle lock, man, that is some just, just excellent storytelling in that match. It kind of felt like how Roman and Taker should have felt 
if Taker could actually wrestle a good match anymore, which he kind of can't because he's old and broken down. It happens. Now, next week, it seems that Stephanie will address Shane and his actions at Best in the World and that whole World Cup thing. So we're going to continue our Raw vs. SmackDown, McMahon vs. McMahon type view thing as we usually do. Until the end of time, clearly, it's always going to be McMahons and McMahons until there are any more McMahons. And spoiler, Shane has three kids and Steph has like three or four kids now. So we're never going to not have McMahons running this show unless somebody else buys the company, essentially. It's going to be McMahons forever. Get used to it. Anyway, so yes, your five-on-five five traditional elimination match for the men and the women will be happening at the show, which is great. I'm just curious what the stakes are going to be this year, if any, if any. Thought I had that good old-fashioned back party drop of uh, brand supremacy, as if they aren't the same freaking company, man, like seriously. It's not like back in the day where they actually had completely different staff trying to do Raw and SmackDown and actually having them compete for ratings. Like, that hasn't been a thing since Paul Heyman used to write for SmackDown. Like, come on. So, I don't know. It's... SmackDown still is a better show. Like, regardless of what they try and tell you about it being the B show, if you watch it every week, it's usually a better show. So, in any event, there was that. And we got some more teasers for Ronda and Becky... And, not shockingly, no Brock and no AJ. So I would say, perhaps, some AJ stuff on SmackDown. Talking about Brock or whatever, because Brock's not going to show up on SmackDown. It's Brock Lesnar. Come on now. Come on now. Brock going to do, good God, the strength. What Brock is going to do. So, I, I'm assuming this is no DQs, or I'm going to knock out Mankind to get the chair shot in. I don't actually know. Uh, I was not paying that close attention to this particular match, so very curious. But I do want to hit that Luthez signature on the big show. And yes, I am assuming tonight on SmackDown they'll say, hey, Shane's the team captain because Shane is the best in the world. And that's supposed to be the start of a storyline. I don't know what in the blue hell that's going to be or who it's going to be. I heard rumors of perhaps a Daniel Bryan Randy Orton feud happening uh, towards the Rumble, but who knows? We're getting awful close to that season. It's already November. So, there is that. What the hell? You changed the positioning on me. Big Show. Oh, yeah, right, Big Show. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You wish. I'm jumping butt bump hip attack in the Big Show. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm all right. Let's build that meter up. Come on. Signature. Okay. That's press. Stomp, co. Stomp, co. Stomp, co. Okay. Now then, I need a chair. Well, first of all, first of all, Austin Stunner, you dumb sob. We. All right. Well, <laughs> and here's to ya. Anyway, let's go get this chair and hit him five times. Five times. Five times. Five times. I missed. Where you going, Big Show? Where you? One, two, no, two, three, four, I broke the chair, I broke the chair, Big Show was just that big and nasty, that I broke the chair, gut buster, we're gonna hit one more chair shot, and then get to another stunner, and then win this matchup, hey Big Show, oh come on, you got to be kidding me, right? Oh, no! Austin, no! I can't believe you, Big Show. I can't believe you. Side, Russian, leg. Mankind, oh, what? relax yourself, Foley. Relax yourself. Five. Action. He's going to pilmanize him, folks. He's going to pilmanize him. And that's... Oh, really? Get right up. Get right up. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone, go! Said so. Alright. Signature. Let's press again. And then stunner. And then pinfall. And I'll put you away. And here's to ya. Stunner. 
and then get, a, get in his face and talk trash. That's what I do. Oh no, what the hell was I? I didn't mean to do that. What the hell, man? What? Oh, I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. Because three, two, one, I'm out of time. Lame. He got right up. I did not hit any button, I swear. I did not hit a single button to pick him up. Not one. Not one. Big show. Not one. Okay, can I hit this finisher? And then pin the man. I'm not gonna hit, I'm only gonna hit circle here. I'm only gonna hit circle here. As soon as this finishes the replay, I'm only gonna hit circle. Nine, eight, the taunt is so... Four. What the hell was that? Oh, thank God. With one second to spare, Foley almost threw me there. Steve Austin has defeated Paul White. Oh my gosh, I don't believe it! Paul White is a 500-pound bag of monkey crap. And this Sunday at WrestleMania 15, Stone Cold Steve Austin won't have it half this easy when he goes one-on-one -on -one with the great one at the most electrifying WrestleMania of all time. If you smell, etc., etc. Bonus match tomorrow, Shane McMahon versus X-Pac. I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos every day. I'll see you next time, right here on this channel. And I'm out.